Now to an exciting breakthrough by scientists led by the University of Cambridge in a new and efficient way of harnessing power from photosynthesis. It's a powerful chemical reaction that occurs in plants and the research published in the journal Nature says it could one day become an important source of clean energy. At the beginning of photosynthesis, there's an explosion of energy, like at the source of a river. Extracting the energy from this stage has proved impossible so far. That's until scientists tried lasers. What we've done is we've taken a laser and shined it directly into the living cell. This is a cyanobacterial cell. And the laser flashes a million billion times faster than your phone camera uh, takes video. The laser lets scientists see what's happening at the start of photosynthesis in useful detail for the first time. The laser showed the working of the electronics of the cell. That gave researchers a target. Once captured, the electrons were chaperoned out by a molecule shown here by the white dots. You can't get better efficiency than taking it right at the beginning of the photosynthetic chain. Because we're taking it right from the beginning of the chain, we can reach the maximum efficiency possible. In the experiment, a dinner plate-sized amount of the bacteria powered a computer for six months. This kind of efficiency is helped by how good plants are at soaking up sunlight. Plants absorb 100% of light from the visible spectrum of the sun. Compare that to solar panels, which absorb nearly a third less. The way plants get energy from the sun is through photosynthesis. In photosynthesis, plants take carbon dioxide from the air, along with water and with the help of sunlight and chlorophyll, they turn it into sugar and oxygen. These end products mean the chemical reaction forms the basis of most life on Earth. Plants use some of the energy they capture for functions like growing, moving towards or away from sunlight, or for distributing nutrients around their stems, stalks and leaves. But not all of the energy absorbed is used, so scientists say the electrons taken from the plants are spare. Now, what the next challenge is, is to design uh, agents by which we can move that electron to, to, your, to your phone or to an electrode. The new energy could look like solar panels or a bioreactor, like a brewery. Fascinating stuff. Let's get some more insights and bring in Tommy Bakey. You just saw him there in the report. Mr. Bakey, thank you so much for coming into the show. Uh, this is a remarkable discovery. How did you come up with the idea? Well, we were actually uh, sitting in a bar where we came <laughs> up with this idea. Um, there's a, it was a real experiment. We actually didn't know what would happen. And we were had a real privilege to really be there and go like, wow, we've actually managed to see these charges form in photosynthesis and then eventually worked out how to intercept them. You've come about what everyone seems to be desperately looking for right now, a powerful source of quite literally green energy. What could your technology mean for the development of the renewable sector? Well, it's, it's quite um, interesting because we already rely on uh, photosynthesis for everything we eat and for everything that we breathe, as, as your really good piece outlined. But what we think now is that we might be able to rely on the plant world also to power some of our devices. Now, how clean is the resulting energy really? How about the process's own carbon emissions, for example? Well, a photosynthesis actually grabs carbon from the atmosphere. So it's a very difficult technical question to answer actually how green a specific technology is. You have to take into account how you're making it, where you have to transport it, and how you might recycle it in the end. But usefully, using plant-based solar cells, really all you need to do to make it is give it light and water. And it has this additional advantage that it actually takes carbon from the atmosphere, which is something that traditional solar panels wouldn't be able to do. It almost sounds too good to be true. What needs to be done to use it on a bigger scale in the future? Well, we've already outlined how, for example, we can use this technology to power computers for relatively short periods of time, admittedly. But when we push something out to the real world, we have to consider what's called the levelized cost of electricity. So the amount it costs to make it and install it and the uh, efficiency that you get out, the power that you get out. That comes into what's called the levelized cost of energy. Now, we can't claim that we're ever going to be as efficient as a silicon photovoltaic. 
But what we can claim is that it could lead to incredibly cheap solar panels because you can just add, as I said before, add light and water and you get a, get quite a good solar cell. Mm. So hopefully being able to use the, the, the abundant uh, abundance of water and, and light that we have on this planet, we can develop really, really cheap solar panels all around the world without expensive manufacturing processes. What other areas of application are you looking at for your findings? Well, photosynthesis has been used for humans for hundreds of thousands of years to produce food, to produce fuels, and to produce useful materials. But now what we've outlined is maybe a new paradigm where we can use it for electricity production and for a whole swathe of different electronic processes too. Tommy Bakey from the University of Cambridge, thank you so much. Thank you very much.